I've been making plans for running the fuel lines on Beefcake, so we've got the, the Teflon lines I mentioned in previous videos. Um, and I'm going to be running those underneath the car, so I don't want to run them through the car for safety reasons, and I don't want to run them through the tunnel because I can't easily secure them and stop them from moving around and, and being noisy. Um, but before I attach them to the bottom of the car, underneath the floor pan, um, it made me realise I need to clean the floor pan up big style. So I, I undersealed it in about 1996 <laughs> um, and ran it for a couple of winters back then, um, which say it worked a treat. Um, but then in 98 it came off the road after an accident and then it spent 20 years being rebuilt. Um, and then I noticed that since it's been back on the road now in the last couple of winters, you can see that the, the metal is starting to get exposed as the, the underseal is dried and it's hardening off. Um, so it needs to come off. Now, if you look online about how to remove um, underseal, there's a few methods suggested. There's the old fashioned scraper Rooney. Um, probably, probably a heat gun, and I'll probably have to do this anyway in the nooks and crannies and the smaller tight spaces to, to get the underseal off and then you wipe off any small amounts of residue with thinners and stuff. Um, some people will suggest using dry ice, apparently if you fill the floor pan full of dry ice it gets that cold that any underseal underneath goes, goes really hard and brittle and you can bang it off, it cracks off. But I don't know where you'd even get dry ice from. I've never seen the dry ice shop. I know it's made of, but I don't know how to make it that cold. So yeah, that's an interesting idea. Um, however, I was talking to a, a friend of mine, and he very kindly suggested I borrow something off him, which is this bad boy, and it's a Monty Bristle Blaster. Uh, it's basically it's a wheel that spins around, uh, or a belt that spins around with needles on it, and they ping off this bar. And then effectively they do a, they create like a shot blast effect. Um, you've, got, you've got lots of little needle hits on, on the metal. Um, apparently for removing older, dried up, hardened under seal and paint, it works an absolute treat. Uh, and it also gives you a, the added benefit of like a sandblast effect on the metal. So it's perfect for keying uh, uh, some decent epoxy paint and stuff under there. So we're going to give this bad boy a try and uh, see, see how this performs. Unfortunately I didn't realise before I uh, accepted it, how much it's actually worth. And this is a thousand pounds worth of kit. Uh, and the belt on it alone is about, well, just under 30 quid for a single belt. Um, so yeah, we're gonna order another belt because I don't want to risk damaging or, or wearing out his belt uh, at that price. So we're gonna order another belt and we'll give it a whirl. And thank you very much, dude, it's appreciated. Before we uh, make a start on the car, I thought we'd do a quick um, comparison. So I've got a piece of metal, it's vaguely smooth, it's just got a bit of surface rust on it and I thought we'd do a quick uh, a quick go over the wire wheel, uh, one with the flappy paddle uh, and one with the bristle blaster. So it's all next to each other and we should hopefully be able to see uh, the difference of the, the finish that they leave. Now for years and years I've used these, I've just used wire brushes. Um, I never knew it was a problem, I never knew there was any issues with that. Um, and I've used that for prepping metal, cleaning metal up moving the under seal, everything really, before I paint it. Um, but if you look into what pe some people suggest, um, and they're saying that it polishes the surface when you use these, which gives you a nice shiny surface, but that's not good for uh, paint to key to. Uh, so it's not optimal in terms of uh, making your paint stick, basically. Um, and also, apparently, they can dry, it can drive in impurities into the metal. Again, never heard of this personally. Um, but you can drive it's just salts into the uh, metal so you get corrosion underneath the paints again. Whether that's true, I, I don't know. Um, also, I've used flappy paddles. So this one's um, a 120 grit and it's well worn. Um, so for that reason I would use it on, on thinner metals such as a floor pan and stuff. Uh, probably not for removing the uh, underseal and stuff, probably no good for that anyway. Uh, but for cleaning pe old paint off on off a floor pan or thin panel, if you're gentle with this and it's well worn and it's, let's say it's a, a finer grade, you, you should be okay. But just be very, very careful. It's, it's easy to do damage fast with these things. Could use the, the medium sized wheel so it's a fair comparison between the different wheels. I've invented a new measurement today. Well, I'm not invented, I've stolen it from school days. Um, <laughs> but so for anyone who went to school uh, via a bus or coach, they may well know what a fusty is. 
um, and this uh, bristle blaster has a fusty distance. So that's the distance between the uh, the little fingers there and where they, they create maximum pain on the subject, whether it be the child in front of you or off the piece of metal you're cleaning. <laughs> so uh, as the bristles turn around, so they flick off this bar and they kind of flick just below it here. That's where all the energy is, obviously it's spinning at a, a bit more speed than that. Um, so you have to keep your workpiece about there, the correct fussy distance. Wow. Well, that isn't what I expected at all. Um, so, obviously the first one here is the wire. You can see it is shiny, it is relatively smooth. And that's the surface I've always kind of worked from for painting onto. Um, in the middle, you've got the, the flappy paddle. If you can see, it's not perfectly smooth. You can see how the wheels cut into the metal in places. Um, so you do have to be careful. So even with a 120 grit, which is well worn, it still bites in look and you end up with a non-smooth surface or non-perfectly flat surface um, but then look at the bristle blaster that's bonkers <laughs> so it's hard to, to come show you the comparison but oh, it's so rough in comparison it really is I mean in terms of a surface for paint stick to that's just unbelievable I've got a nail just to, to try and show you to try and compare so how relatively smooth the the wire section is See a bit more rough where the flapper paddle is. You can barely run the nail over the other, the bristle blaster part. That's so well keyed, that's just crazy crackers. The other thing as well <clears throat> is it took probably about half as long to do that little section as it did the other two. I expected the bristle blaster to be really slow and it's not at all. So, so far, very, very impressed. Um, so, we'll give it a try on the, uh, the floor pan now and see how it takes under seal off or old under seal and blasts at the same time. I've got beef up on stilts so I'm trying to keep it covered because I suspect I'm going to make a lot of mess. And welcome to my dungeon for the next week or two. When beef first hit the road again about two years ago um, the floor pan looked pretty reasonable, it had a, a nice even coating of black so it looked well protected although it was something on my list to do at some point. Um, and then minimal running in the winters for two years and so I try not to use it in the bad weather and the salt but uh, what a mess it now looks um, so the, obviously the under seal has gone hard and flaky look uh, water's got under it, salt under it in the grit and it's made an absolute mess and so this is probably one of the worst sections so we're going to start here and see what the bristle blaster does Found a hole. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. That's cleaned up so fast. It's a lovely surface for paint on. I am absolutely blown away how well that works. Expect to get dirty, guys. Oh, plopper, bright, bright. <laughs> right, let's come and have a look. So, I've been at this for an hour, um, and in that time, I've managed to do basically half a floor pad. And I kind of got up to the, uh, the rear frame horns and had a little tickle around there. So, on the, on the flat stuff, it really motors, so when you're on the flat pans, um, it clears the uh, the seal off and I'd say ever so fast. It's uh, it's really really quick. Um, it gets a little bit trickier when you get to the seams and stuff like here. Um, you can make it work, but I'd say you have to be a bit more patient with that sort of stuff. Uh, curves. 
which is around here you can do uh, it just managed to go around curves like that however when you get to such as uh, the frame horns and suspension there because the uh, the bristle blast is so bulky it's like a, a large angle grinder you just struggle to get into around things like pretty hard to show you how clean the floor plan is now compared to before when it was covered in unseal. Um, so I've been under here for about two and a half hours in total over a couple of evenings um, and this is kind of the stage you've got to so both the floor plan halves and the spine and some of the channel areas and, and bits and pieces are now uh, missing under seal. Um, however it looks pretty rough you're probably thinking I don't look very good at all. I'd say it looks pretty bad. Um, it was recommended when I borrowed the blaster, he said that it would flash rust very, very fast. Um, as you can see, this part here was done two days ago and it has it's, uh, it's flash rust really quickly. Um, I was recommended to use phosphoric acid. Um, I personally use uh, K-Rust, it's just one I've used for years. Um, so I think it's a similar thing. Um, and that should give it a, uh, a protection short term so I can, until I come to paint it. However, I want to go over again because you probably see I've missed parts. Um, so I'm actually going to put another belt on the, the bristle blaster, uh, go over it again, um, and get all the bits I've missed, and make sure everywhere's got a really good keyed surface. Two and a half hours in, it's looking pretty worn out. So all the bristles are getting a bit mangled up now. Um, it's still clearing under seal off okay. It's just like a thousand angry hamsters scratching away, but it's not giving that um, really good. Uh, shot blaster surface which I say when it first started it was doing a really good job off and it's now just tickling a little bit so uh, time for a, a belt change so I believe the belt's supposed to do uh, two meters squared and it's done a full four pan more or less so it's done about that um, so it's time to change the belt for a new one and then I'm going to go over it and uh, cover the bits hopefully I've missed and make sure everything's cleaned and prepped before I uh, treat the metal that kind of brings you on to probably the kit's biggest uh, disadvantage which is cost so another belt's going to be 30 quid unless you can find some second hand new old stock ones or something online um, and obviously a thousand pound for the kit in the first place comes in quite expensive however I, get, I guess you get what you pay for because when it comes to cleaning floor pans and large flat um, areas with paint or under seal or any of that stuff on it just it eats it off in no time it's absolutely amazing for that um, it's impressive, so it's by far the most impressive thing I've found for, for removing that sort of stuff. Um, it's not so good for getting around corners and nooks and crannies as I kind of showed you on the video. I said the biggest issue really is the size of it, physical size of it. So comparing to my angle grinder, it's, it's a good three inches longer than an angle grinder. Um, it's not quite as heavy, but it is heavy enough to make your arm hurt when you're upside down for an hour. Um, but uh, yeah, so getting around nooks and crannies is a bit of an issue. And also because the, the bristles aren't overly long, you don't have much depth there, so it's hard to get into any recesses uh, unless they're fairly shallow. So there are disadvantages, but say for, for clearing the pan, the main main face of the pan, absolutely monster it. Um, there are other kits online which are similar and maybe better for going around nooks and crannies. I'm not sure. Uh, so this is the the 110 electric version. I believe there's a pneumatic version of the Monty Bristle Blaster, which I think is physically a little bit smaller, so that might be better. For, for that sort of thing um, and you'll probably come across the MXB die blaster at some point which I believe is physically smaller still and pneumatic as well I think it only uses a small 12 mil wheels thin wheels uh, in that one um, and also it doesn't have the accelerator bar so if you don't have the accelerator bar it basically just scratches off the under seal and paint and stuff but it doesn't give that shot blast effect because that obviously flicks the, the bristles so I guess you take your choices again, um, but the the die blaster comes in quite a bit cheaper than the bristle blaster. So 
Um, it depends what you want, ultimately. But yeah, uh, really, really impressed overall. Uh, thank you again for the loan. And I guess the, the only other disadvantage is you end up looking like a pirate coal miner. Ah.